In today's video, let's talk a little bit more about the health benefits of myo-inositol, which is a B vitamin-like compound that when metabolized in your body converts to phospholipids and thereby may impact signaling within the reproductive hormonal axis, within the glucose insulin metabolic axis, and it might impact mood as well as bone health. Now, I wanna make it very clear in these videos, we're not talking about diagnosing, curing, treating, or preventing any disease. We're talking about supporting health, and please work with your doctor before considering natural compounds like myo-inositol. So what's interesting about this is it's been compared to, with regards to other prescription compounds, I'm not gonna mention any names to not get in trouble, but it's very efficacious at around four grams per day particularly for women who have a condition that is known as PCOS. Now, this manifests as sort of a hormone reproductive dysfunction, but it's actually the upstream cause of this is insulin resistance, okay? So a lot of people think, oh, I have polycystic ovaries, so I must have a reproductive issue. Yes, that would be correct. However, the sort of the, the reason why this is manifesting as underlying insulin resistance. And so this is where myo-inositol comes in because it helps to block insulin resistance and it helps to improve insulin sensitivity. So I wanna share with you and throw this paper up on the screen, potential role in therapeutic interests of myo-inositol in metabolic diseases. Okay, so there's been a lot of different conditions that have been studied with regards to show health benefits and support uh, with regards to adding in myo-inositol as a natural product to improve uh, some of these conditions, uh, namely LDL levels in men. So this is LDL levels uh, in insulin resistance uh, in men. We also have the PCOS and elevated levels of androgens in women. Now this is worth sort of unpacking and talking about because what happens with insulin resistance and the best way to measure this, and I'll share with you a little bit about testing and, and some things like that in just a moment uh, with regards to insulin resistance uh, in women and infertility and PCOS. But first, my friends, I just want to welcome you all back. It's Mike Munsell, as always. If you're enjoying these videos, please hit that like button and make sure to share this as a direct text message uh, or, or share it over you know, on email or whatever on, on social with a friend that you know that suffers from insulin resistance because actually a recent study just showed that about 23% of adolescents and teens have prediabetes. We've talked about in other videos about 83% of all American adults are on this insulin resistant prediabetic spectrum. And so we're gonna talk more again about how a natural product like myo-inositol, very accessible, very affordable, uh, can be helpful in those in those uh, individuals. So I'll put links below to things that you can share, that you can check out and so forth, but just appreciate you letting other people know that they have natural solutions that are available there. Uh, but again, going back to the infertility uh, issue in PCOS, we have reproductive health. So I'm just gonna, gonna put uh, uh, reproductive health. Okay, so what we have here, my friends, is infertility is on the rise. These fertility centers and clinics and assisted birthing facilities are everywhere. Now you might say, well, why is that? Uh, that's because partly the endocrine disruption, but a lot of people have been on hormonal birth control and a lot of people are insulin resistant. So insulin resistance blocks fertility. Like it, it causes the polycystic ovaries, it causes reproductive dysfunction. So here you have a compound and I know family members that have gone to fertility clinics and I ask them, were you ever told about myo-inositol? They're like, hmm, I took a lot of stuff, but that one doesn't sound familiar to me. Let me go back and look at my notes. It was never mentioned, which is a travesty because this is really affordable. You could take two to four grams per day. Various studies have shown improvements in various parameters related to a reproductive dysfunction. Now, uh, it's not gonna detoxify anything. Um, you might wonder, well, if it's so effective, how is it working? And this is what's interesting. You know, when we look at something like metformin or an ACE inhibitor or a statin, the mechanism of action is very clearly elucidated. We know exactly how it's working. In the context of a statin, it's inhibiting the enzyme HMG-CoA reductase. But like myo-inositol, it's, met it's being metabolized into phospholipids and it, it affects cellular signaling. And this is why it's, its benefits are not just linked to one condition. It's not just an insulin sensitizer. It's been shown to improve mood. It's been shown to improve bone health. It might even affect some aspects of cancer signaling and, and immune health. It's been shown to affect metabolic health. So when you affect cell signaling and metabolism, you, you improve the whole network. Uh, someone had shared with me a long time ago, her name is Martha Herbert, this idea of a spider web. 
okay? When you pull on a spider web, you're not just pulling on one string, you're affecting the whole network. And this is where natural products, exercise, lifestyle, sleep, stress reduction, you're affecting the whole network. You're not just affecting one pathway. And that's the difference between say allopathic medicine, you're hammering down one pathway and sometimes that's needed. You have really high blood pressure, let's just squash, turn off the spigot, right? Let's just put an ACE inhibitor in there, a thiazide diuretic, calcium channel blocker. Let's just hammer it down. But if you have a, a disorder, say metabolic syndrome, that's a cluster of all these interrelated disorders, we need to affect the network. And this is a piece of the puzzle that can be utilized here. So um, we have reproductive health, we have mood, we talked about uh, uh, lipid issues and oxidized LDL. This was one study in overweight men, I remember. Um, but women, I think this is really a supplement that women that have poor metabolic health, visceral adiposity, whether they're skinny, fat, or obese, they should consider along with exercise and nutritional uh, strategies and stress reduction and the whole thing. But um, when would you want to take it from a circadian rhythm perspective? I would suggest in the afternoon and the evening. It might be one of those things you just take when you remember, but because it can improve sleep, because it may affect neurotransmitter synthesis and things like that, it could be a little bit better to be taken uh, in the evening. And we know that as the day goes on, insulin resistance increases from a circadian rhythm standpoint. So you're more insulin sensitive in the morning compared to in the evening time. Uh, again, the studies show between two and four grams per day are effective. So that's it for myo-inositol. I would definitely read a little bit more on this. A lot of people are not aware of it. Some people want to know, hey, what's the difference between d inositol and myo-inositol? Well, d inositol has been studied a little bit more in PCOS. It is a little bit more expensive though. So I think myo-inositol is more accessible. It's really affordable. So if you had to split hairs, yeah, maybe you spend a little bit more money on d -Kyro. But myo-inositol is also found in food, various animal foods and plant-based foods. So it is in whole foods. That's the important thing. You might say, well, why is PCOS on the rise? Why is lipid issues on the rise? Well, a lot of people are eating processed food derived from sugar, corn, soy, and wheat. Well, it turns out that when you process the heck out of food and most of those foods are not very high in inositol to begin with. And so that might be, uh, we might have an inositol deficiency. Um, so that could be part of it as well. So again, I'll put links to resources in the description below. Check out this article. Um, there's a really cool image here, a few really great images uh, in the article talking about all the different aspects of inositol. So as always, my friends, thanks for tuning all the way in. Hopefully you found some value out of this video. If you did, hit that like button. Thank you for leaving a comment and we'll catch you all on a future video down the road. Bye now.